Hello, and welcome to another fabulous video lecture. Today we're talking about Ross Gay's The Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude, um, which uh, is one of my favorite poems of all time. I'm not even going to lie. Um, I've loved this poem since the very first time that uh, I actually heard it read to me by the editor of the magazine that first picked it up when it was, uh, before it was published in a book. I, I know, whatever. But, um, anyways, this poem has just always stuck out to me for, like, the way that it's just so wildly brash in every way, right? And by brash, I mean it's just sticking out there, right? It's, like, unafraid. It doesn't give a shit about itself in literally in any way. It doesn't care what other people think. It's here to say what it has to say. Um, I kind of, like, I kind of dig that. I don't know. That's, that's an energy that I can get behind. Um, so, yes, it should be noted, as Ross Gay himself notes, that this is a super long one, right? Um, and we're going to talk about why here, but um, before we get to why, I wanted to point out that there is a video which can help with the length, and there's also even um, a musical version, which uh, I find uh, really nice. Um, so Ross Gay later did a collaboration with the guys from Bon Affair, um, and they sort of set this album to music, uh, or this book to music this song for sure um you can go check that out it's on spotify and other places and i think it's i quite frankly think it's fabulous um if you're into it check it out cool 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 so um why is this so long well i think it starts with the title right and i always do love to start with titles if i haven't told you that before now let me tell you now that like i feel like titles are like the key to understanding a lot of things, especially with poems, right? An, an author will lock up a lot of meaning up there in the title and be like, oh, you, made, you read past that? Ha ha. Right. Here the poem is called Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude, right? And unabashed related to the word bashful, which maybe you've heard a little bit mean. It means unashamed, right? Without shame. Not stopping. Nonstop. Right. And gratitude, of course, means thanks. A catalog is a long, long list. So this is literally everything. A list of everything for which there is to be grateful. And I mean, like, you know, every Thanksgiving we start to stop and think about grateful things, right? Um, but, like, this poem sort of expands on what we think about as worthy of gratitude, right? And a lot of times when I teach this in class, I'll go around the room and I'll say, hey, everybody, what are you grateful for, right? People say family, they'll say their moms, they'll say their pets, they'll say uh, their health, right? And what's the first thing that Ross Gay says that he's helpful for? Well, if I'm not mistaken, it's a big pile of cow shit, yeah? By which you don't mean lots, we mean tons, yeah? Um, it's such a surprising thing there, yeah? And that's actually going to lead me into the first word that um, I want to teach you. And that's the word juxtaposition. Spelling, difficult. Understanding, a little more fun for me. All right, so let's spell J-U-X-T-A-P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. So it's the word position, and then in front of it, you've got juxta, J-U-X-T-A. One more time, the whole thing, J-U-X-T-A-P-O-S-I-T-I-O-N. Sweet. So juxtaposition means placing two images or ideas next to each other in order to create a meaning that wouldn't be there otherwise. Again, placing two images or ideas next to each other to create a meaning that wouldn't be there otherwise. Yeah? So, um, for instance, let's start with the simplest of juxtapositions in your mind. I want you, all right, picture an apple. What does an apple mean? You can write it down if you want, but like, you know, what does an apple mean? If you said, I don't know, what does an apple mean? That's a fair question, right? Now, picture a snake. Some of you are already with me, but let me do it for some right? Picture a snake. What does a snake mean? I don't know. I mean, you could come up with some stuff if you wanted, but I don't know what a snake means. But now, picture an apple and a snake. What does that mean? It means Adam and Eve. You feel me, right? And it's weird how that happens, right? That, like, the putting together of those two ideas is where that meaning is created. Does that make some sense? You get where we're coming from, like that basic idea? Let's see what Ross Gay is doing with this juxtaposition business, right? So right off the bat, again, he says, Hear ye, hear ye, I am here to tell you that I have hauled tons, by which I don't mean lots, I mean tons of shit, right? And, and it's not just, like, nasty. It talks about how this stuff is gross, that the people, that the guy who drops it off, like, can't, is holding his nose because it smells really bad, right? 
But out of this terrible thing, the next thing he talks about is that out of that, they built an orchard. So I guess this was how they conditioned the earth in order to grow an orchard. And he said on the day they opened this orchard, a little baby tamped in this apple tree with their little baby foot. And I got to tell you, I have like a three month old right now as I'm recording this. And like that image is so sweet, right? Like the baby. And you can see the symbolism there, right? The child tamps in the tree. The tree grows with the child cyclical growth we grow things for our children our children or what we grow you know where i'm coming from yeah how this like sort of like comes together and then i'm thinking back to that cow shit right what does the cow shit have to say about this by smashing them together is creating a meaning that wouldn't be there otherwise which is that it's out of some of these things that we might not originally understand is beneficial that the beautiful experience of life in its wholeness comes into focus, right? So throughout, he goes even further, right? Like, how shit, that's gross, right? But he talks about some devastating things and says, thank you. He says, thank you for taking my father. He says, thank you for my friend who committed suicide, right? Like, it's in there. It's tough. This poem has some really dark things in there. Most of which get a thank you. And like, I don't want to oversell the idea of like everything happens for a reason or that like, you know, you have to like be grateful for all the things that happen to you because some of the things that happen to us suck. And it's okay to like admit that, right? And like have that be a truth. But there's also something to the way that the universe mm, that we live in is beautiful even with all the messed up things that have happened, that do happen, that continue to happen, right? Um, you know, like right now, it's the summer of 2022 when I'm recording this, it's a weird time politically. Um, and like, I think hope and gratitude in this time are vital importance. That yeah, seems reasonable. Um, Cool, 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 cool. So that is juxtaposition, and I really love it. Um, two other terms I want to talk to you. One is a classical poetry term that I just think is a lot of fun that I want you to learn um, just to like have in your memory banks. It's one of those things I like to just pass down to kids. It's the word anaphora. I know that's a mouthful. Turn with me. A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A. -A -A. Anaphora. A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A. -A. And what is anaphora? That is the repetition of a beginning word or phrase. So, um... In here, he, in many things, just says thank you over again. Thank you this. Thank you this. Thank you that. Thank you this. Thank you that. What's the effect that that has? Well, one, if you're like, it kind of bores me in space. I understand that this poem gets a little long. It's like, again, right? But, like, for me, and again, maybe this is just me, it goes through boredom and then comes out on this other side where it feels, and maybe this is weird, but almost like spiritual? I don't know. Like, it reminds me kind of of... Uh, a rosary if any of you have had that experience where you say the same prayer over and over and over and over again and it kind of like goes deeper i don't know maybe that's a weird thing to say but um like uh chanting has that effect it's not accidental it's like a i'm sure there's some measurable psychological effect there right um anaphora also has its place in traditional rhetoric that is like speech giving, right? Um, if you've heard that phrase before, it might have been because they love to teach it in reference to Martin Luther King's I have a dream speech, right? He keeps saying, I have a dream, 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 right? Um, it's a great speaking technique. If you're ever giving a speech, just keep saying the same like first line and then like change what you comes after it every time you'll until your time is up, you'll be fine. I know that's wild, but it's also true. Um, so yeah. I really enjoy the way that it does that. And I think that's uh, really excellent. Um, I really like the way that he clearly weaves the personal into the poetic here, right? Like, so often with poems, and we'll even talk later about poems that do this intentionally, but so often with poems, there's no clear connection or only a connection between the person in the poem, the speaker of the poem, the person saying I in the poem, and the poet themselves. But here... He's collapsed that. He wants you to know that's him, right? Because he apologizes to you, the reader, which is another thing I really love. I love that he apologizes to you. I'm sorry, this one's going on too long. Here, have a blanket and some tea. We'll be done soon, I swear. Mm. But yeah, I really like the fact that um, this uses his own life and story in some way, and I think that really is one of the reasons this is so impactful to me. Um, right? 
So um, I also really love the surprising word choice. I love the way that he invents words that like I've never heard before, but I seem to know what they mean. He talks about horses huckle buckling across a field. I don't have any idea what that means. I don't. Right. But when I see, when I picture, close my eyes in my mental eye, horses huckle buckling across a field, I think I see something, right? They're like running in a rush and it's kind of goofy looking. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, right? Um, he talks about how the heart is bumble fucked. What does that mean? I don't know. But one, it sounds correct to me, right? He also calls the heart a pelican, a knucklehead, a gaudy maw. I wonder what all that means sometimes. I really dig it. Not even going to lie. Okay, so um, last thing I want to teach you about here, and this is sort of uh, my favorite. Or I've said that too many times. Anyways, he also uses jargon. J-A-R-G-O-N, jargon. So jargon is the vocabulary specific to a certain field or interest. Yeah? Um, so... Again, the vocabulary specific to a certain field or interest, right? This is the, like, um, so for instance, words like fast break, double dribble, um, gosh, uh, point guard, etc. are all jargon for basketball, right? And words like dice, chop, colander, sieve are all uh, jargon words for cooking. Here's my point, right? Is that one, there are jargon words for almost everything, right? There are jargon words for video gaming. There are jargon words for every sport and activity. There are jargon words for almost every job, right? Um, and two, everyone knows several different kinds of jargon, even if they don't realize it, right? So again, jargon is different from slang in that the people who know it are grouped by their interest or their profession, generally speaking, right? Everyone who knows this is um, uh, within a certain subculture of some kind, yeah? Uh, yeah stick with it. Um, so, yeah. That's jargon. Uh, you hear him using jargon most specifically in this poem in that beautiful, long, ridiculous list of plant names, right? That's wild. Um, and I, you probably, if you are if you have the time and interest, it's interesting to see the difference between the way that he reads those in the video that I showed you and in the, uh, uh, in the recorded music version, right? Because, like, they take on a different kind of energy in... in a different way um but in both cases right it's like there's this ecstatic wild glory in just knowing all these dumb words right which is maybe a silly way to think about it but like i think it's true right among the many things that are wild and perhaps worthy of gratitude is like the language that we speak right a and the way that language at this point is so capable of encompassing almost any experience and thought process right and the way that it takes so many different turns and means so many different things and there's so many like it's an unending learning experience right um maybe i'm overselling it but I, I, that's that's how i feel about it okay so um hope all of that makes sense if not call me Shoot me an email. Let's get in touch. Let's have that conversation. Particularly because you need to know all of this stuff for imitation one. So your imitation is your version of Ross Gay. Um, this is your chance to write a poem about what you're grateful of. Don't worry. Only has to be uh, much shorter. Um, check the assignment sheet for all the details. Not nearly as long. But um, I am asking you to use juxtapos juxtaposition, surprise, jargon and a little bit of your own personal story to sort of um get the feeling of what it's like to write a poem i feel like this is a really good way to help you think about what is goes into unlocking a poem all right so again any questions let me know be sure to check the assignment sheet thanks once again you guys are killing it uh